James walked home after a day at school when an unexpected sound caught his attention. It was a noise coming from the water. Curious, he approached the riverbank cautiously and saw a dog desperately struggling to stay afloat. Hey, are you okay? James shouted, concerned. The exhausted dog just looked at him with pleading eyes. Without hesitation, James ran towards the animal, diving into the river to save it. With effort, he managed to pull the dog out of the water. It's okay now, you're safe, James whispered, trying to calm the shivering dog in his arms. But when he put it down, the dog refused to move. James examined the animal more closely and noticed strange spots on its belly. What could this be? He murmured, worried. Deciding not to take any chances, James took the dog home, hoping that a cleanup could help. At home, James tried to clean the spots, but they persisted. This doesn't look normal, he thought, growing more concerned. When his parents arrived and saw the dog, their reaction was immediate displeasure. James, what is this? Why did you bring a sick dog home? His father asked, clearly irritated. Mom! Dad! I had to help! He was stuck in the river! James pleaded, trying to explain the situation. Seeing the concern on their son's face, James's parents reluctantly agreed to help. All right, let's take him to the vet, his mother said, sighing. On the way to the vet, the dog's condition worsened. Quick, Dad! He doesn't look well! James exclaimed, anxious. Upon arriving at the vet, he realized that something was not right. After a series of tests, the vet was perplexed. He couldn't identify what was afflicting the dog James had rescued. We need more specialized exams, he told James and his parents with a tone of concern. The dog was taken to a laboratory and after some time the vet returned with news. The results would take a few days. When James wanted to take the dog home, the vet hesitated. Not possible, James. He needs to stay here for now. James and his parents, confused and worried, reluctantly agreed. A few days later, an urgent call from the vet came. Come immediately, he told Rick, James's father. Rick, in a hurry, called Emma, his wife, asking her to pick up James from school. We need to go to the vet now, he said, his voice tense. In the office, the vet greeted them with a serious expression. He asked a series of strange questions, focusing more on where James found the dog than on the test results. If you don't cooperate, I'll have to call the police, said the vet, making James and his parents look at each other confused and scared. James was telling the truth, but to his surprise, the vet called the police. Soon, officers arrived and took James to the police station for further questioning. Why are you doing this to me? James whimpered as his parents pleaded with the police. He's just a kid who tried to help a dog. But the pleas were in vain. James was taken in the police car, looking back at his parents with fear and confusion. At the police station, James was treated harshly. Why am I here? He repeatedly asked, but received no response. He was pushed into an interrogation room where the stern gazes of the police officers intimidated him even more. Finally, a police officer entered and began questioning him. Where did you find this dog, James? Tell us everything. James explained, for the hundredth time, how he found the dog on his way to school. I just wanted to help, he said, his voice trembling. Recognizing the boy's fear, one of the police officers decided to come clean. James, let us explain what's going on. James listened, horrified, as the officer revealed the truth. There was a series of dogs found in similar conditions, victims of a criminal organization using them in dog fights. They were fed harmful substances to make them more aggressive. We've been investigating this for months, the officer continued. And now, with your dog, we may have a crucial lead. James was shocked to learn about the existence of Cray Johnson, known as Crazy Johnson, suspected of leading this criminal organization. The police suspected he was behind the mistreated dogs, but so far, they had no concrete evidence. 
Your dog is the first one we've found alive. He could be the key to cracking this case, the officer explained. James, still shaken but now understanding the gravity of the situation, agreed to help. The police devised a plan, equip the dog with a GPS tracker, and use him to locate Cray Johnson's operations base. And so, with a risky plan in motion, James found himself at the center of a police operation, anxiously awaiting news about the dog he had saved, and was now helping to dismantle a criminal network. The police, with a meticulously crafted plan, prepared to use the dog as bait to trace Cray Johnson and his criminal operation. Is everything ready with the GPS tracker? One of the officers confirmed, while another nodded, securing the device on the dog. We hope he gets noticed and taken by one of Cray's associates, explained the operations chief, closely monitoring the GPS screen. Hours passed in tense anticipation. Suddenly, the GPS screen indicated movement. There he goes, said a police officer, pointing to the screen. Cray's on the move. Cray, upon spotting the dog, stopped, clearly confused. He looked around before cautiously approaching the animal. What are you doing here, huh? Cray muttered, glancing around before picking up the dog and taking him inside. The police team observed every movement on the tracker. He's moving. But where to? A police officer murmured as the GPS signal shifted to various locations. Finally, the signal stopped at a remote location. This is strange, commented one of the officers. It seems like he stopped in the middle of nowhere. After 15 minutes of immobility, the team decided to take action. Let's go, ordered the chief, and the police cars sped off. As they approached, tension mounted. We're almost there, said a police officer, his voice filled with anticipation. But to their surprise, there was no dogfighting arena. Instead, they found Cray talking to someone in a car with the dog by his side. Looks like a transaction, whispered one of the officers. Without hesitation, the police acted, arresting Cray in the midst of the deal. Cray Johnson, you're under arrest, announced one of the officers, handcuffing him. In the interrogation room, Cray was reluctant to cooperate. Why would I help you? he challenged. You're looking at a long time in prison, Cray, said a police officer, pressuring him. Unless you want to negotiate. After some contemplation, Cray agreed. Fine, I'll talk, but I want a reduced sentence. With the information provided by Cray, the police prepared for a major operation. Are we ready? The chief of the operation asked as the officers confirmed. The police cars departed, each heading to a different location. Five locations all at the same time. Let's end this, said a determined police officer. The operation was an overwhelming success. Two criminal organizations were dismantled and 56 people were arrested. But most importantly, the dogs were rescued. How many dogs did we find? Asked a police officer while another replied, we found 120 dogs, and they're all on their way to the vet now. The dog that James had found received special attention, recognized as a hero in the operation. Days passed, and James anxiously awaited news. His parents tried to reassure him, saying that the police would take care of everything. Finally, the police arrived with news. James, we got the culprits, said one of the officers, a smile forming on his face. And we have a surprise for you. There was the dog, now healthy and happy, wagging his tail as he saw James. The boy ran to hug him, tears of joy in his eyes. You're back, James whispered as the dog licked his face. It was the happy ending James had been hoping for.